Hey everyone, welcome to another artwork analysis. Now, I figured this might be the right time to talk about another franchise, another released media. And I always advocate really good anime because, as I've always said in my other social media, when anime gets bad, it gets really bad. And to masterfully make anime not that can be a bit difficult in my opinion because there are a lot of tropes, very bad negative, negative stereotypes when it comes to the genre, the style. So let's look on the good side of anime, which of course is why I made this video. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make it on bad anime, of course, and I want to talk about near automata or in this case akihiko yoshida is the main character designer for the game so i really really like the designs when it comes to near automata and again it's so easy to just overload anime designs which is why i want to talk about the idea of value-based designs uh, appeal with functionality. So how do you balance between just sheer ridiculousness of overloading designs with something more simple? And of course, I'll talk about simplicity and why the silhouettes for um, the three characters I'll be talking about make it work. So let's look at the value-based designs. So I said in a previous video, I feel there are really two types of artists. One who values values more and one who values colors more, hues. And in a lot of cases, you as a really high level artist, you would have to know both. Um, and a lot of cases, it's very easy to well, I wouldn't say easy, I would, that's, that's a little bit disrespectful, but it can be easy to just overload with a lot of colors and the sheer chaos hides the mistakes. But when it comes to value-based designs, it's a bit harder to hide bad choices. So Akihiko Yoshida in this particular case with Nier Otabara, obviously the characters are very minimal in colors. Um, there are There is a reason why when it comes to the story base, but I, it, you know, I don't want to go into it too detailed, but the black and white just works beautifully in this case. And I'm going to look into the three characters. Now, 2B here, you can notice that even on the design here, the most color that exists on this character in this particular illustration are just the warm grays. Now, I've talked about how, let me, let me actually draw it out for everyone. I've talked about before where the midtones usually contain the most details and that's because the midtones uh, when we look into the extremes, so extreme white and extreme black, obviously when it goes to those points, the hue is minimized, the saturation is absolutely zero. Um, there's, In other words, there's just no colors going on. So what happens when you go in between those before the extremes? That's the midtones, and that's where all the colors can exist. So... In this particular case with Akihiko Yoshida, obviously the blacks are not going to have much color. The whites are obviously just uh, just bleached out. There's no way there will be colors. So the little areas where he does have midtones going on, um, he uses it to his full advantage. He doesn't put too many colors because why do you need so many colors when it comes to this style? Oops, you just need a little bit. So here the saturations are just 
very subtle. Um, it's obviously a brown. It's not going to be some crazy color. And also, around it are greens. If we zoom in right here, there are just a tiny bit of the complementary color. So, like, there's a blue turquoise here. There is a bit of green here. Very subtle. We don't need that many colors in this type of designs because we of course are looking at a value-based design so notice how if we were to zoom out here we can simplify this into basically even two values here is black and there's white we obviously don't need to see the details here to make note of the silhouette which is what I will talk about in, uh, in the next two points value-based design I would say is more striking and it tends to test the artist even more. Again, chaotic colors can hide a lot of mistakes. Try simplifying when you, even for practice. Make your character readable in black and white. Um, in a lot of cases, you'll find that it is much more difficult than just spamming color on a design. And um, this works for a lot of games too. So when it comes to gaming, it's, it's, this, this is sort of an off-topic thing, but when you're designing for gaming, you have to note that you, in most cases, there's gameplay functions. People need to see the characters readily. They need to know where their characters are. And most importantly, they need to know perhaps where the enemy characters are. You don't want to have designs where it's too hard to see in a frantic movement. So especially when it comes to Nier Automata, the characters are always looking at um, doing combat, very frantic, very action-y combat. I'm sure if you've played this game, you'll agree as well. So having these striking characters that are readable with values alone, easy to look at, very, and it'll stand out from the environment um, very easily. So um, in contrast with the environments of this game, they tend to be more colorful. So force is very green. Um, there's etc. Cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of light in the, uh, the amusement park. Um, I, I won't bring them up, but you, you know what I mean. When you have just desaturated colors on these characters uh, put in front of very striking saturated backgrounds, obviously they stand out. Um, so here is uh, A2, another character in the same style, of course, and 9S. So same thing. Obviously, still, if we were to zoom out here, we will absolutely read this as either black or white, and it'll completely read no matter how far this character is on the screen. Uh, this is, again, something that you should take note of if you are designing for games. Always look into the values first before you try to put colors on. One thing I really dislike when it comes to designs is when there's a lot of chaotic colors. Um, bears repeating because I feel, again, it's something that people tend to fall into without really thinking if they really need to have them. So... I want to talk about appeal with functionality next. So, obviously these characters are very anime inspired. Uh, they're, they're obviously the maid archetype. I'm sure there's a lot of negative, very perverted even, very perverted stereotypes when it comes to this. But one thing to note is that Akihiko Yoshida managed to make this very classy in a way. Despite the fact that we have to believe in a world where there's androids dressed in maid costumes, basically, it seems to work. And it's just, it doesn't look too perverted. It doesn't look like it's... It, it just kind of fits to me. And that's really the pinnacle of great design. There's a reason why Nier Automata was so heavily praised and that there's so much fan art going on. Um, another game recently that I feel like has fantastic character designs for obviously different reasons is Overwatch. When really good designs are shown in media, the fan art falls and it kind of inspires artists to just play around with 
these designs in their own in their own fan art um and that's really where i want to get into obviously there is a functionality aspect to it when it comes to creating your characters for your game or for your whatever your your tv show whatever you're working on there has to be a sense of functionality so in this case the story it requires these androids to fight so obviously 2b here has swords here which of course all also kind of combines with her design so again something to think about somehow these japanese design swords kind of work with this made costume and it's again a testament to just how good the values are so there is a functionality aspect to it she 2b is very mobile she has to flow through the screen throw flow through combat so of course that's the functionality of it but the appeal is where your take your creative take in designing the characters will come into play we don't want gray blobs when it comes to designs um i'm sure every art director will want some unique cool looking design um and of course it depends on your audience too so in this case anime influence can work um other games wouldn't, wouldn't be able to get away with this but know where your line is drawn can you get away with more appealing more crazier designs even if you are tied down with functionality when it comes to art direction you will be given briefings you will have to cater to what characters will have to do so one example that uh, animators uh ha well animation training in art school told me was imagine if you have two penguins that have to hug each other so the arms the, the wings of the penguins have to be long enough to hug each other and that was actually one i forgot which series it was but it was a design flaw that they figured out midway that caused some re-rendering and re-rigging of the penguins because oh no now the penguins have to hug and they didn't design it properly so anyways they're basically the, my point is look into what your characters have to do within the story but push the limits and not every client will allow you to do that um of course in this case akihiko yoshida looked like he had a lot of fun with it but really really push it and don't just think functionality also think about how you can work within those parameters to create unique designs and in this case 2b 9s a2 fantastic simplicity and silhouette to finalize the video here again i always always advocate simplicity over chaotic details so once you get the simple design the silhouetted design that's when you can add the details so the part in the zoom in is a little bit lewd here but notice how when we look far away here we obviously have the black and white design we have the silhouette and we from even from the posing alone we know that to be right here is a very strong character and not to spoil too much she is a very strong character um from story standpoint she so she, from her silhouette alone we kind of get the idea of what she might be f from a character standpoint before we even play the game so once we have the design that's where we can start playing with details so details would be stuff like these designs here so these are the a fabric that she's wearing here so obviously these designs here are in a way secondary we're not going to see this most of the time when we're especially when the character on screen is kind of small and they're moving like crazy but these don't hurt so when you are designing based off what you have silhouetted make sure that when you add the details you don't break the silhouette 
if you break the silhouette, you are inherently breaking what made it work in the first place. A lot of people make the mistake of adding details that kind of break the shape of what they made. So I'm telling you to make sure that once you have an approved design that you try your best, your hardest to avoid giving details that do not help the design. In fact, in most cases, adding elements will most likely kill your design. So in this case as well with A2, Lois, same patterns here. They are part of the same organization. Um, obviously, her she has more tattered clothing for story purposes, but I won't spoil that for people who want to play it. And of course, her hair as well, fantastic. We don't really need to see these little loops here when it comes to the, these designs. We don't need them, but they don't hurt um, after you have the silhouette ready. And of course, look into 9S, same thing. A lot more details on his particular clothing, actually, uh, compared to the other characters. So notice how the buttons here, most likely when we zoom out, we wouldn't be able to see these details. We'll just see a black shape. But again, once you have the designs, it doesn't hurt. So to on the final note, I want you to, to show you previous designs that were not approved for 2B. Because I always say it's not only worth studying the finalized designs, I want to always look at what wasn't chosen as the final designs. Very important because in most cases concept art, you're not going to get it on the first try. Your art director will want to see more. And one particular thing to note is that there's obviously preferences on what um, the art director would probably have wanted. But notice there are similarities as well. So there are, so, I mean, there are differences rather on what was taken out from the final design of 2B here. So as a comparison. So notice how, of course, this silhouette here, I agree with uh, whoever in the studio says not to put it in. I think this is very distracting. It was unnecessary and it was it's much better when it was taken out. This type of thing, you can take these things out or add things in this stage of work. So notice how these characters are simplified. When you are doing concept, concept art, again, you will be doing a lot of these, a lot of iterations. And Notice how these, this style is so simple. There's really not much to it. And this allows for an easier way to edit as you go along. And if there's anything that's not approved, you can always erase it. So in this particular case, I'm sure Akihiko probably just deleted that like that. And oh, that's 2B, the finalized 2B. And again, Look how simple it is. It's just black ink on white canvas, on digital painting, nothing too fancy. And he managed to create some magical characters. And I always advocate people to play this game for inspiration because it is anime done right. And I feel when anime is done right, it is done incredibly well. And uh, in this case, fantastic designs. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.